Welcome back to Strength Through the Scriptures. We're not going to have any music uh, this afternoon. I did a recording early this morning on uh, this uh, subject that we're studying today, Standing in the Gap. This is part two. Uh, but from the last podcast till this podcast, uh, most of you know, you know, are no doubt experiencing like the rest of us, this coronavirus, COVID-19, and how it's shut down the country, actually shut down the world, and a lot of people are, um, you know, living in fear right now, a lot of people living with a lot of uncertainty right now, and justly so, we understand that, <clears throat> and so this uh, little thought that I've got this afternoon, I just want to share it with you, I'll just briefly recap, just give me one or two minutes, I'll recap what we did last podcast. Um, but I, I just want to want you to think about this thought here. The thought is standing in the gap. And uh, we're going from a biblical standpoint on this thought, but really I, I started thinking about the people that are being affected uh, by the coronavirus and uh, people are on unemployment, uh, may not have any money at all right now uh, from being laid off at their jobs, their positions. Uh, just struggling to get by, trying to maybe group together and uh, collaborate with family and friends and just, just trying to, you know, make it till the next day right now. I understand that. And so <clears throat> a lot of us are in that situation. So I really thought about this standing in the gap and how it's put a new perspective on it and how we need to stand in the gap uh, between good and evil. And, and But, you know, also we need to stand in the gap for our family members, our neighbors, our friends, our co-workers. There's a lot more people involved when I say standing in the gap. And so it just brought a new perspective, um, just a new uh, angle, if you will. But if you'll just bear with me just for a few minutes, I'm going to be short. Uh, just give me about 10 or 12 minutes and we'll be done. But um, in Ezekiel chapter 22 in the Old Testament of the Bible, <clears throat> the Bible said, And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the lamb that I should not destroy it. And then the sad commentary is, but I found none. And so he was looking for <clears throat> a man to stand in the gap between good and evil uh, and trying to uh, discern that. And, you know, uh, a shepherd that uh, shepherds sheep. We have a member of our church, Brother Gary Davis, and he actually had, I think, around 30-some sheep for a few years there, and he, he kind of shepherded, uh, or I guess that's the word, shepherded uh, those sheep. And he, he, he began to talk to me about, you know, some things he went through with those sheep. And if you if you look at a, uh, a shepherd uh, uh, has a uh, place that he brings his sheep in, uh, the sheepfold is what it's called. And he brings them in at nighttime <clears throat> and maybe uh, bad weather. He brings them into the sheepfold. And there's just one way into that sheepfold and one way out. And then when the sheep gather into the sheepfold, maybe it's uh, getting late and the shepherd's trying to get them all corralled up and put them up for the night or it's bad weather, whatever, whatever what have you. Um, <clears throat> that shepherd would always sleep and, and stay in that gap, that that entrance way to the sheepfold, he would stay right there. You know, if he wasn't trying to tend to one of the sheep or maybe doctor one of the sheep up, maybe had some, uh, uh, you know, an injury to the sheep or scratches, he had to, you know, put some balm on. But uh, at that night, he would sit in that gap or stand in that gap to keep any uh, wolves out and keep any, uh, you know, the, maybe some animals out there that would come in and harm the sheep. Uh, that shepherd was there to protect the sheep and to guard the sheep. And, you know, I believe that's what God wants us to do, dear friend. Those of us that have been saved for a while, doesn't really, really honestly, it doesn't matter if you've been saved one month or if you've been saved 35 years. Uh, God wants us to stand in the gap for those around us. Amen. And try to be a stronghold uh, during, especially during the time we're living in right now. <clears throat> and um, our pastor, Brother Duncan, he's been standing in the gap at our church since November of 1981 is when Good Shepherd Baptist Church uh, was organized and God had uh, put him as the pastor there, the shepherd, if you will. So last time we got together the podcast, we talked about standing in the gap requires consistency. 
God wants us to be consistent as a child of God or as a Christian. Amen. Uh, consistency is vitally important. That word consistency means fixed, firm, constantly adhering to the same course. And so uh, the winds are going to blow and the storms are going to come and circumstances are going to happen in our life, but we need to stay the course. We need to be consistent and just uh, one day at a time, just stay the course. Amen. And then last week or last time we got together, we talked about standing in the gap requires courage. Amen. And this is a difficult time that we're living in. Uh, no doubt about it, dear friend, for all of us. Uh, but the Bible said that God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. So God wants us to be consistent. God wants us to have some courage. And then I, I'm not going to uh, labor that point. I just want to get into the last two points and I'll be quick. But the third point is standing in the gap requires compassion. And I believe uh, through all of the uh, difficulties and turmoil that we're going through with this coronavirus, I believe that we <clears throat> have had a, a heightened level of compassion on one another. Uh, it's easy to get in that uh, mechanical mode, go to work, come home, you know, be with your family just day in and day out. You just, you become mechanical in that and, and you fail to look at your uh, neighbor, fail to look at the situation maybe someone next to you is going through and have compassion on them. Uh, but we're living in a time now, dear friend, we need to have some compassion on people. <clears throat> but in the book of Luke chapter 10, there was a certain man that came and uh, he was stripped of his raiment or his clothes and was left for dead there on the street. And the Bible says that uh, the priest came by and saw that man laying there uh, almost dead. Uh, his clothes had been stripped from him. But the Bible said that the priest passed by on the other side. And then later on, there was a Levite. He came by that same place and saw that same man laying there in need of someone to help him. Uh, but again, the Bible said the Levite passed by on the other side. But then, uh, thank the Lord, we see a picture of this person. He's a good Samaritan. We know him as a good Samaritan. Uh, but then the Bible said, but a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine. That oil is uh, symbolic of the Holy Spirit, and wine is always symbolic of joy. And set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, or like a little hotel, if you would, today. And took care of him. Then the Bible said, on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence, and gave them to the host. And said unto them, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. So the thought here, dear friend, is this Samaritan, was, we call him the good Samaritan, he had compassion on him, the Bible said. Amen. The book of Jude, chapter 1, uh, verse 22 there. Uh, well, that's only chapter, I guess, in Jude. But the Bible said, And of some have compassion, making a difference. Some have compassion, making a difference. And so, uh, dear friend, the time that we're living in, you and I have the opportunity to show compassion on people. Uh, maybe you work at a hospital and you've got, you know, no doubt the hospitals are packed right now. Uh, I mean, people are just waiting to get into the hospital. Uh, maybe they've got the coronavirus. Maybe they're, maybe some other type of illness. I don't know. But um, um, you, you look at those people that are sick. We've, I've seen pictures on Facebook, people having respirators or maybe on the ventilator. Uh, families are putting pictures of their loved ones and asking people to pray for uh, their father, their brother, their sister, mother, whoever it is. And you look at those pictures of those people on the ventilators and, and in hospital beds and just uh, trying to struggle to stay alive and and. If, if anything, dear friend, it ought to bring out compassion. And Jude said, and if some have compassion, making a difference. So if you and I, dear friend, want to make a difference in the day and time that we live in, I'm talking about now in 2020, we must show compassion. And then let me say this. <clears throat> Lastly, uh, number four is standing in the gap requires conflict. We're going to have some battles along the way. Amen. 
Um, that's just part of life. And, and, and whether you are, uh, have a family member that's sick or maybe you're sick, maybe you got the coronavirus or I don't know what your circumstance is now, but you're facing a battle. In, in life, dear friend, we're going to face many, many, many battles. Hey, man, the circumstances that we live in, uh, the, the time that we live in, life is just uh, uh, full of battles. Hey, man, I'm not saying that in a bad way, but it, it, but it is. Well, Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18, This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, then Paul said that thou might, uh, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare, and that we're in a spiritual warfare, dear friend. I know we're in a physical warfare against this virus, and and that you don't have to turn the TV on uh, just for a few moments to learn that. Amen. You'd have to be living under a rock if you didn't know anything about this coronavirus in the last few days or weeks. But we are living in a time of uh, we're warring against this virus and sickness all around us. And it's growing. It seems like it doubles every day. We turn the TV on. It seems like the numbers double of people that are sick or people that have died. But uh, greater than that, dear friend, we're facing a spiritual battle against good and evil. And so God is wanting the child of God or you uh, that claim to know the Lord Jesus and have him as your Savior. He wants us to stand in the gap. You say, Brother Mike, what does that require? Well, it requires spending some time on our knees in prayer. It may require picking up the phone and checking on family, checking on neighbors, check on that coworker uh, that you haven't seen in a few days. It may require that we we drive by and drop off some food uh, on somebody's front porch and let them know we're coming and say, hey, I was just thinking about you. Uh, we had some extra food. We'd like to, uh, you know, we want to make sure you have enough. And I just wanted to donate or just drop this off and and we don't want to be repaid for it. So uh, you can go on and on, dear friend, how we stand in the gap. It may just be letting someone know you're thinking about them, you love them, you're praying for them, keeping up with them on your social media, whether it be Facebook or whatever. So <clears throat> the, the biggest thing here is standing in the gap. So uh, just these four points, and I'm going to close out. Standing in the gap requires consistency. Standing in the gap requires courage. Standing in the gap requires compassion. And then standing in the gap requires conflict. We're going to face some battles along the way. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this podcast. I hope you'll share it with your friends. Uh, you can reach out to me um, at uh, mikegsbc at gmail.com. Again, that's mike, M-I-K-E, G-S-B-C at gmail.com. If you have any questions or you have a prayer request or Whatever the case may be, dear friend, we're, we're trying to reach out to everyone we know and, and let them know we're here to support them. Amen. It's been wonderful to, to be with you on this podcast. We'll be back, Lord willing, next Sunday morning. Uh, this morning that the weather was in such a condition, I, I wasn't able to produce that podcast. I had to delete it. So that's why I'm coming back this late afternoon here uh, on, a, on the Sunday, uh, March 29th. Anyway, uh, we love you. Uh, we, we appreciate you for listening to this podcast. I'm going to sign off and just, just be in much prayer for those around you. And uh, Lord willing, we'll be back uh, next Sunday for the next podcast. Strength through the scriptures.